With a vaccine against the new coronavirus many months, if not years away, scientists and doctors are racing to treat the disease it causes. They have identified antibody testing and blood plasma therapeutics as promising approaches to mitigating the health and economic related fallout from the pandemic. These technologies could also help us learn more about how widely the virus is spread. It's based on the same principle of if you have a protective antibody, passive transfer of that could provide not only protection prophylactically, but also treatment. When patients recover from a viral infection, they produce virus-fighting proteins known as antibodies. These circulate in a person's blood and help protect against future infections. Antibodies are particular to the invader they're produced to fight off. If they're found in the blood, that means the person was infected and that they now have the molecular defenses to fight that virus off, a process known as immunity. In theory, doctors could transfer these antibodies to a person who is still sick, so these proteins could help them recover. This kind of therapy has been tried in the past, during previous public health crises. It was used in the 1918 flu epidemic. It was used in many outbreaks of mumps, polio, and measles in the early 20th century. And it continues to be used as recently as the SARS epidemic of 2003. The treatment, known as convalescent plasma therapy, is gaining traction now because there aren't other approved alternatives for treating COVID-19. The word stopgap is often associated with it, and the reason is it is available today. The safety and efficacy haven't been established yet through clinical trials, which is the gold standard, but preliminary tests in China have shown encouraging results. And in March, the FDA started to allow doctors in the U.S. to treat some patients with the plasma of those who have recovered from COVID-19. For the recipients, we are looking for people who are admitted to a hospital, uh, who are showing increasing oxygen requirements, which indicate to us that they're on a potentially a downhill course. Mount Sinai in New York is one of a growing number of hospitals across the country administering convalescent plasma to qualifying COVID-19 patients. Recovered patients interested in donating plasma fill out a survey. Then, to comply with FDA guidelines, clinicians have to put these potential donors through two tests. First, a diagnostic test. They have to make sure they're not still carrying the new coronavirus. And then, an antibody test to ensure they're making enough antibodies to fight the virus off. That second test looks for antibodies in blood plasma. Scientists at Mount Sinai developed an antibody test by starting with a genetic code for the virus. That serves as the blueprint for proteins. Using these instructions, they mass produce synthetic copies of a protein that the virus has on its surface. Then, they take special plates with dozens of tiny wells and coat the bottom of each one with the synthetic proteins. After that, they put some of the donor plasma into each well. If there are antibodies, these recognize the viral protein and bind to it. The scientists then add an additional antibody, which lights up what it binds to the synthetic viral protein and coronavirus antibody combo. Scientists run this test at different concentrations until it stops lighting up. The more they have to dilute the sample, the more antibodies the person's plasma has. The more antibodies, the better the plasma is for therapy. Scientists do this kind of testing in labs all the time, but to do it clinically, they need to notify regulators. If a potential donor passes the virus and the antibody tests, then Mount Sinai clinicians ask them to go to the New York Blood Center, where they can give enough plasma to administer to patients. Then, there are two other hurdles before that plasma can be given to patients making sure it doesn't have any other viruses, like hepatitis or HIV, and the blood types have to match. One donation can likely treat two people, according to preliminary estimates. So far, Mount Sinai has treated more than 30 patients. Administering the therapy requires sign-off from the FDA. How will you tell uh, if somebody's getting better because of this treatment? Well, in about four or five days, hopefully they'll be recovering more quickly than other people with similar characteristics. We have a team of biostatisticians that are starting to model what happens uh, for patients in our experience in the health system, such as the length of hospital stay, the need for ICU days, the need for ventilator, and of course, uh, mortality and survival are, are of course the ultimate. The treatment is not without risks. Transfusion reactions can include fever, allergic reactions, and even lung injury. And like the swab tests that tell somebody if they have the virus, antibody tests are also in short supply. 
In the long term, the hope is that they could help mitigate some of the economic effects of the pandemic. So right now I'm talking to you from my apartment. You're in your house in, in Baltimore, I imagine. Could this kind of testing also help policymakers figure out who is, is able to go back to work safely? If we knew who has antibody we, and they have recovered, you could imagine that those could go work safely. Uh, it would require an enormous undertaking to test almost everyone in the country. The antibody tests also have to be highly accurate. And recently, the accuracy of some tests developed abroad has been called into question. Despite the challenges, scientists are optimistic that plasma therapy could help patients recover faster and give them clues about how deadly the virus really is. We don't know the denominator. We don't know the number of people that have been infected but did not have disease. And, and the presence of antibody in their blood will identify that subset. And you need to know that number to know really how lethal this disease is. 